Hi, I'm Sam. And I'm Sienna. And today we'll be walking you through an example case for interviewing here at Bates White. The case interview is a key part of our interview process. The goal of today is to get you comfortable with what you'll experience during your interview. The case interview is an opportunity for you to demonstrate your analytical thinking skills and abilities to brainstorm. You don't have to know everything about the industry we discuss. There will be some math involved and you are allowed to use a calculator since we're more interested in your thought process than in your ability to do the actual math in your head. Now let's read through the case. We have been retained by a major cell phone manufacturer to investigate the impact of potential collusion between suppliers of cell phone batteries between the years 2019 and 2020. The manufacturer, TalkTech, alleges that the batteries it purchased for its phones were price fixed. That is, suppliers of batteries allegedly colluded with one another to raise the price of batteries to its downstream customers, such as TalkTech. This collusion constitutes price fixing, which is illegal and can be prosecuted as a federal offense. TalkTech is suing the phone battery manufacturers to recover damages for the harm caused by the alleged collusion. Damages are calculated as the difference between the actual price that TalkTech paid for its batteries and the but-for price, which is the price they would have paid but-for the alleged price fixing. We start our cases with some background information. The cases we use during our interview process are loosely based on real cases at Bates White, although all the details have changed. The interviewer will read the case background from a piece of paper but I find it helpful to listen to three important pieces of information. So first is the players involved. So in this case, it's the cell phone manufacturers and the suppliers of batteries. Second is the alleged conduct. So in this case, price fixing. And lastly, the time period, 2019 and 2020 in this matter. You can ask the interviewer to repeat or clarify these points throughout the case. Pay close attention when the interviewer mentions what the goal of the case should be, as this will help you anticipate where the case is headed and what types of analyses we might perform. Let's start with question number one. What are some supply and demand factors that may affect the price of a cell phone? Generally, we start each case with a brainstorming question. This helps establish the background of the case and lets you demonstrate your brainstorming abilities. Note that you will have a limited amount of time in your interview, so don't spend too much time on the brainstorming question. It's helpful to take a moment and pause to organize your responses before you give them. For questions that ask you to list out multiple things, prioritize your most important answers. Ultimately, we're looking for quality over quantity. Let's brainstorm our answer. The question asks for both supply and demand factors, so let's treat them separately. First, I'll consider the supply factors. A few examples could be the cost of raw materials used to create the phones, the cost of labor used to design or assemble the phones, other types of manufacturing costs, or even the capacity of the manufacturing facilities. They may hit some sort of constraint that could require them to spend more money on things. The other side would be demand factors, things like the availability and price of substitutes, the quality of the product, especially the comparative quality to those substitutes, things like population characteristics or other consumer trends, and finally, macroeconomic factors that might significantly impact the entire market. Question number two. We have received data on the prices of cell phone batteries. The data we have covers cell phone battery prices from 2017 to 2022. What trends do you observe in the table? Based on the price trend, what should the prices have been in 2019 and 2020? How much did TalkTech potentially overpay for batteries in those years? I would start by noting the questions that were asked and copying the table down to my notes. It's always a good idea to use the tables as they will serve as a basis for most of the analyses. Additionally, you can use these tables for subsequent questions. To answer this question, I need to observe a trend in the yearly price per battery. I'll start by looking at the table where I see that prices are generally decreasing by 50 cents per year. Other than a $3 increase in 2019, and a $4 decrease in 2021. Assuming that the price would have continued to decrease by 50 cents every year, but for the conduct in 2019 and 2020, I can add the but for price to the table for the years 2019 and 2020, which would be $18 and $17.50. 
This but for price will help to calculate the overpayment. In order to calculate the overpayment, I need to subtract the but for price from the actual price of the battery. I've calculated a $3.50 overcharge in both 2019 and 2020. Now, I'll take a moment to formulate my answer to the question. There is a general downward trend in prices, although prices are higher in 2019 and 2020. If you assume instead that prices should have continued to decrease at a rate of 50 cents per year, then TalkTech paid $3.50 more per battery than it otherwise would have in 2019 and 2020. Question number three. The table shows the total cost to manufacture battery as well as the profit. Costs in 2019 and 2020 are higher due to a natural disaster. Assuming battery manufacturers price their products to make a steady profit each year, what does this suggest about TalkTech's overpayments in 2019 and 2020? Based on this assumption, what were per unit overcharges in 2019 and 2020? It's common for questions to build off of each other, like challenging an assumption we made in a previous question. Here, we introduce new context about a natural disaster that we should consider in the context of our previous overpayment analysis. Just like before, I would replicate this table in my notes. When possible, it's best to try to add new information to a table that you've already created, rather than creating a new one. This will save you time and also help keep things more organized. Here, the new information is in the last two columns, which I would add to my notes. To answer this question, I need to use the two new columns the total cost per battery and profit per battery. For simplicity, I'm only displaying the profit per battery, which subtracts the cost from the price. Now, I want to calculate the steady profit value, which is the profit we see in the non-conduct years, which we can see is $9.50. Next, I want to understand what the overpayments were, which is the difference between the actual profit per battery and the steady profit value of $9.50. For both 2019 and 2020, I've calculated a $1.50 overcharge per battery. Now, I'll take a moment to formulate my answer. To answer this question, I would say something like this. Batteries still may have been price fixed in those years because profits were higher than in other years, but to a lesser extent than what we previously calculated. Specifically, Overpayment per unit was $1.50 instead of $3.50, since the actual price per battery of $3.50 above the but-for price is offset, in part, by the cost in 2019 and 2020 being $2 above the trend. Question number four. How are customers ultimately impacted by the elevated price of TalkTech phone batteries? After a few questions where we perform analyses using the data, we like to end with some discussion questions. This is an opportunity for you to demonstrate your understanding of the case concepts and apply them to broader situations. I think there are two scenarios we should consider here, whether the demand is inelastic or elastic. I'll consider the inelastic scenario first. If consumer demand for talk tech phones is unaffected by price, meaning that the demand is inelastic, then cell phone manufacturers may pass on this higher battery price to consumers. Thus, consumers would be harmed by the price fixing of TalkTech batteries. However, if consumer demand for TalkTech phones is affected by price, meaning demand is elastic, cell phone manufacturers may not be willing to increase prices to the consumer. So, consumers may not be affected. However, if other smartphone batteries were also price fixed, cell phones may still be sold at a higher price overall. Then, consumers may still be harmed. And that's it for the example case interview. The actual interview will be longer, but will follow the same format. And if there's time left at the end, we encourage you to ask any questions you have about Bates White to the interviewers. Thank you for joining us for this example case interview, and we hope to see you at Bates White soon.